Governors of the Southeast states have met with the president to discuss pressing issues affecting the region. And one of the issues raised is implementation, or rather the completion, of the ongoing rehabilitation work on the Enugu International Airport, a request which the president immediately granted by approving 10 billion naira for the project. The chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum and leader of the delegation, Governor Devu Mai of Ebonyi State, also requested a special intervention for the speedy completion of the airport and the rehabilitation of federal roads in the region. They also called for the declaration of a state of emergency on the roads in the southeast region. We came principally to request Mr. President as a follow-up for a special funding release for the takeoff of the reconstruction of the Akanwebiam International Airport in Enugu State. And uh, we told him the need uh, for the special fund we're asking for release. But graciously, he had already done that. And so we gave Mr. President standing ovation. And our people are very excited, you know, very happy. And we appreciate Mr. President for doing that. And of course, we talked about, um, you know, the disconnect. Uh, due to the deplorable conditions of our road between one state uh, to the other in South East. Now, for more insight into the South East leaders' meeting with President Buhari, one of the South East leaders, Chief Emmanuel Umayao, joins us from our Abuja studio. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on the program. I know you are at this meeting, so I'd like to ask you first, walking out of that meeting, what were you thinking? Your expectations, I would like to know, were they met at this meeting? Yes, uh, we, we, we walked out, uh, we were happy because uh, we met the president who was kind enough to approve uh, 10 billion naira. So we were very, very pleased and very happy. So we're quite happy. Right. Uh, so let's, let's go to perhaps the elephant in the room uh, during yesterday's meeting, and that's 2023. Now, for a lot of people, that might appear as though four years, a long time. But in politics, we know that that's just a short time. So on one hand, did that come up during that meeting? And what were perhaps the resolutions that came up from that discussion, if it indeed happened? No, uh, it wasn't part of the agenda, really. Because actually, we went there to present the post <laughs> Uh, state of infrastructure in Southeast. But that particular issue is an issue which I think all leaders must address very seriously. Uh, myself, I have been in the political scene for over 50 years. I've got a point when I don't have retired. Yes, I'm a politician, but you get a point, you're a statesman. Now I'm a statesman. A statesman is bothered about the country. I belong to a political party, PDP. But I was a Nigerian before I came into PDP. So I believe that every senior citizen must regard himself as a Nigerian and must do everything to ensure that the unity of this country is preserved. No one should try to undermine this country. For example, I have talked to people. When election is over, election is over, and President Buhari has won the election. It's no use going to America, going to Britain, and black, blackmailing and undermining Buhari. Because, you see, Buhari, with due respect, has led the country for many years. When he took, the, when he took power in 1994, he, in 1984, he brought in the war against indiscipline. Nigerians before them were undisciplined. They were rushed for everything. They will scramble for aircraft. They will damage the... He fought the civil war. He has served as, as a governor. He has served in many capacities. Yes, I am not supporting some of the programs of his administration. But I'm not holding him responsible. I'm holding probably those with him because I know that he is a, he's a person who is genuine and honest to the, to the country. Mm. For example, he is fighting a war against corruption. He... Let's be honest to ourselves. He is a president who has come openly to fight, to fight corruption. And obviously, if Buhari has been, is corrupt, they could have put it out up to today. Buhari has been for six years receiving right. attack. Nobody has been able to tell us 
any okay. act of corruption by Buhari. Some one of moment. his subordinate sponsors have done that. So if we can go back, just, just one moment, yes, pardon sir. me. If we can go back to that talk about yes. 2023, because to be fair, it's been a major topic of discussion. So I'd like to know at this moment, what is the stance okay, of the Southeast me, concerning me, 2023 frankly, presidency? We, we believe that fairness is a, is a prerequisite for any enduring unity or, the, or, 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 or federation. We have agreed in this country, it may not be the constitution, but it's agreed that presidency should rotate north and south. That is, after north has south for their time, it goes to the north, south. After south, north, south, it comes to the north. Now, Buhari has served. Uh, so basically, after Buhari's uh, second term, it should come to the south. And when it comes to the south, we expect that in the south, a zone that has not got, haven't had opportunity to serve should be given. South-South is the only zone since 1999 that have not got any opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. Southwest has had opportunity, South-South has had opportunity, and we in the South-South helped oh, you mean South I East? participated in supporting Abasanjo, and I supported them. So I think all Nigerians must support South-East. Right. We get the presidency, it's come 2023. Right. We hear people from other zones warming up. I think it's unfair. And you see, we elders of the Southeast must rise up, come together, and tell Nigerians that it will be a very unfair treatment because we have the people, younger ones, we are leading. They will feel that their fathers are very weak or are incapable of defending their rights because they believe that this is supposed to be the turn of the Southeast. So I want, I'm praying all Nigerians to appreciate right. all the contributions Southeast have made to the development of this country, right from Tatum and Azikiwe, and all our leaders through history have made to, be, to, uh, to give us this opportunity. Mm. Some people so, talk about uh, uh, fraud, corruption, and so on. I mean, when you look at it, I took pains to carry out a sort of uh, random analysis of the money looted these billions of naira rooted in this country. Mm. And I noticed that South East is not involved in any of these billions. All Most right. of the so, billions looted are looted by people not from South East. If I can, I just, throw this, if I can just throw this in uh, just before we go, security also has come up in recent times. And we've seen governors of the South East, you know, come up with some initiatives, hold meetings, you know, just to sort of beef up security in that region. So I'd like to know, did this also come up during the meeting? And, you know, what is the position of Southeast governors and leaders concerning, you know, security in the Southeast? Uh, frankly speaking, the uh, south, security in the South East didn't come up in the meeting because I think our people are coping. But let me tell you, the biggest problem Nigeria have got today is the Boko Haram. And myself and some people I have talked with in South East are not very happy with the process. And we don't believe that this is a battle that can be won the way we are fighting it now. Mm. The army is doing their best. They are doing well to the best of their ability. The president is doing his best. But this war is not a war for, between Nigeria and another country. If Nigeria is fighting another country, you can deploy uh, aircraft, jets, bomb them. But if you are fighting insurgency in your country, right. you can, it's difficult to defeat them through the borders of gun. So you know, I, I think really that we have they, have, they have expanded. And I believe this kidnapping is a business wing of Boko Haram. Kidnapping is part of Boko Haram. If right. we can stop Boko Haram, Chief. kidnapping will stop. They uh, have got right. their Chief point now Emmanuel, when they, have uh, a, when they will... can make money. Chief Emmanuel, yes. uh, pardon me. I, I believe that's a fine place uh, to leave it. We'd like to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. We've been speaking with uh, Chief Emmanuel Omoyawu. He was at that meeting uh, between President Muhammad Buhari and Southeast leaders. You recall that uh, yesterday.